the gray-haired stepchild in the Noctua lineup, the NFP12 Redux. How does it stack up with his ginger siblings? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans. So if you are into computers, feel free to take a look around the channel and if you end up liking what you see, please subscribe. Now as always, I will have timestamps down in the description so you can jump to whatever interests you. But again, as always, I recommend you watch the whole review. As normal in these fan reviews, I start off with a quick overview. There are four 120mm models in Noctua's P-Series. The NF12-1700 PWM, which has an RPM of 1700 and a PWM connector. There's the NFP12-1300 PWM, which has an RPM of, you guessed it, 1300 and a PWM connector. There is the NFP12-1300, which has an RPM of 1300, but only a three pin connector. And finally, the NFP12900, which has an RPM of 900 and a three pin connector. Now the fan I tested was the NFP12700 PWM. So it has an RPM of 1700. It has a nine blade design. It has an SSO bearing. So that is a self stabilizing oil pressure bearing. Again, it has a four pin PWM connector. Noctua does provide a six year warranty for this fan. There is only the one color option, that is the gray on gray. And this fan has an MSRP of 15 USD. Now, before I get into the results of my testing, I wanna be very clear. This is based off of a sample size of one. So this isn't necessarily the exact performance you're gonna get, but it should be relatively close. Starting with the PWM range test, at 100% PWM, this P12 has an RPM of 1740-ish. Then at 0% PWM, this P12 has an RPM of 550-ish. Moving on to my standardized testing. If you have any questions on how I test the fans, please watch my fan testing methodology video. There'll be a card along the top. I will also have it linked down in the description. Now, just a reminder, I use a benchtop power supply to test the fans. So I'm using voltage control, which this NFP12 did not operate at four volts. And that is why there is no results shown for four volts in any of these tests. Starting with the DBA and RPM testing. So at six volts, the sound level was 32 DBA and had an RPM of 880. At eight volts, the DBA only went up to 33 and the RPM was 1180. At 10 volts, the sound level went up to 35.1 dBA and the RPM was 1455. And finally, at 12 volts, the dBA was 38.7 with the RPM being 1710. Now, I did take sound recordings at each of these voltages. On to the airflow testing. I left the DBA numbers up on the chart for your reference. At six volts with no obstructions, the FPM was 175. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 150. And with the covered panel, it had an FPM of 60. Jumping up to 12 volts with no obstructions, the FPM was 425. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 385. And with the covered panel, it had an FPM of 195. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance, at six volts, the average CPU temperature was 81.4 C. At eight volts, it was 77.9 C. At 10 volts, it was 76.2 C. And at 12 volts, it was 75.1 C. Okay, I'll be comparing the NFP12 to the Arctic P12 PWM PST which is 11 USD, the C12 Pro from Thermalrite, which is 20 USD, and the NFF12 PWM, which is 20 USD as well. When comparing the NFP12 to these other fans, 
it lands in the middle of the DBA chart, pretty much overlapping with the NF F12. For airflow, with no obstructions, the NF P12 is moving the same amount of air as the Arctic P12 PWM PST when voltage equalized. Then comparing these fans in the mesh panel testing, things don't really change much. But in the covered panel testing, things do change quite a bit. There is a large FPM drop across all the fans. And now the NF F12, the Arctic P12, and the NF P12 are all within 10 FPM of each other. Moving on to the CPU cooling testing, at 8, 10, and 12 volts, all these fans perform well, which is to be expected, but the NF F12 and the NF P12 do have the highest average CPU temperatures at each voltage. Okay, now for the 34 dBA testing. So having all the fans noise equalized to 34 dBA or 12 volts if they don't actually get up to 34 dBA. With no obstructions, the NF P12 is in the middle of the chart with an FPM of 310. With the mesh panel and noise equalized to 34 dBA, the NFP12 is again in the middle of the chart with an FPM of 275. And finally, with the covered panel and noise equalized to 34 dBA, the NFP12 is now second from the top with an FPM of 145, which is pretty much matching the up here NT12044 the C12 Pro, and the NF F12. So what do I think of the Noctua NF P12 1700 PWM Redux? All in all, it's an okay fan. It performs pretty okay. It has a pretty okay price. But the issue I have with this fan is it looks incomplete. And that's because Noctua doesn't actually include the anti-vibrational pads with the fan. So when you compare the NF P12 with the C12 from Thermalright, not the Pro, but just the C12, the performance should be nearly identical, but the C12 comes with the anti-vibrational pads and is two to three dollars less. Like what the fuck, Noctua? How much do the pads cost? Two, three cents each? Why are they not included with the fan? So I would recommend not going with the Noctua NFP12s. Rather, you should probably go with the C12s from Thermalright, and depending on where you're going to be putting them, the F and or P series from Arctic. Well, that's all I got for this one. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, maybe hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Uh, follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. Uh, maybe take a look at these videos. They should be along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.